One of the difficulties in supporting sustainable producers is that more often than not, you can't just run down to your local grocery store to buy their goods. So how can we make sustainable products more accessible? Well, stick around because on this episode, we're visiting a couple places who are changing their communities. If current estimates hold, the population will reach 9 billion by 2038. One of the major problems we face is feeding everyone. Diseases are at an all-time high. The current model for food production is unhealthy and unsustainable. There's got to be a better way. Scientists say that if 14% of the world planted a permaculture garden or some type of garden just in their backyard, we can replenish the entire earth. So we're setting out to find people who are doing things differently. We'll be looking into alternatives to current food practices that are damaging our health and environment. We'll be meeting the chefs, farmers, restaurateurs, and entrepreneurs who are making a difference. And you'll find out just how easy it is for you to become a part of the solution. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Hit that like button, subscribe, tell all your friends. We'll be eating the freshest food, meeting amazing people, and seeing what we can do to become a healthier, more environmentally friendly world right here on The Fork and Truth. We are live in Old Town Basalt, Colorado, right outside of Skip's Farm to Market. Let's go inside and talk to Daylene. Got fresh produce right here. Hey, Daylene. How are you? Hey, good morning. Good to see you. Nice to see you, too. So, what, uh, what's Skip's Farm to Market all about? The niche that we've created is to have as much local food as possible. So is within Colorado or the western states so that we can strengthen our local food system and support our local economy and the farmers. And so I strive every single day to research every farm, stay in contact with local farmers, see where they're at, and bring in food from the state. And mostly the Roaring Fork Valley right now. Is you want to show us some of the products that you carry? Sure. So this coffee, I mean, I could go through the whole store, but this coffee is from Aspen. This coffee is from Hotchkiss. This is from Steamboat Springs. The honey is from Silt, but we carry honey that is raised and separated by hive by region. So okay. this one is Carbonyl to Glenwood. This one's Aspen to Elgebel. This one's all high elevation wildflower from Redstone to marble, um, raw crackers from Paonia. We have stuff from Hotchkiss that orchards that grow their own stuff. And then we have stuff from Denver, of course. Jams from Minturn. We have teas, like this tea is really amazing. It's raised in Hotchkiss. She grows all her own herbs and she freeze dries all the um, fruit. So it's like literally from Hotchkiss farm to tea bag. This guy is from Basalt, which is right here in town. We have a little tiny herbal apothecary, and all this stuff is from either um, Carbondale or right here up on the mountain, Basalt Mountain Botanicals, which is the um, Colorado Rocky Mountain Permaculture Institute. Um, yeah, all this produce right here. This is from Rock Bottom Ranch, Wild Mountain Seeds. This is in Basalt, this is Carbondale. Two Roots is in Emma, which is just like across the road from Basalt. Um, Juniper Farms flowers, they're in Emma also. All this stuff is from Skip's Farm, Sustainable Settings. We do carry some things from outside of the state. This is from Washington. We do use a distributor that's organic out of Denver. And I love them because they tell me what farms things come from. So when I'm ordering, I can do the research. I can go to the farm on their website see what I'm ordering to see if it's in alignment with what we carry at the store. Okay. We carry local meat from ranchers um, that's all grass-fed. So we carry pork, lamb, beef, bison, um, and chicken. I do source from out of the state. We just don't have a facility in Colorado that is large enough 
to do USDA processing of organic and natural chicken. It went out of business. There was one at the turn of the new year. Little porcelino salami is made here in Basalt. Oh, great. Kombucha. People love kombucha. We have two great companies, Dragonfly June and Elevated Elixirs. And they're trying to create their niche by going out. Like uh, June is made with green tea or white tea and honey. Oh, cool. And uh, the other one is made with Peruvian cane sugar and mate instead of black sugar or black tea. Are they good? Yeah, they're really good. Um, we also have heritage breed pork. One thing that I like, we grew too many chilies last year at Skip's so Farm. Colorado. Yeah. And so I said, you know, to try to create zero food waste with all these peppers and stuff, we have them roasted and then we sell them frozen this year. Um, cherries frozen. And then we have a guy that does sustainably caught fish um, from Gypsum, Colorado, it's Caleb's Catch. And his stuff is really high quality. He's also at all the farmer's markets as well in the valley. We have farm-raised eggs, and local cheese. Oh, cool. Um, we do have one cheese from Utah because it's amazing um, and it's a promontory. And then over here we have like our canned goods sections. So we have barbecue sauce and all kinds of canned goods that are made in Colorado. Do you know where they're coming from? All over? Yeah, so this one's from Emma. And we have spices from Glenwood, pasta from Denver. We have olive oils and vinegars from um, Palisade. This guy is new and his stuff is amazing. The good jar. Um, he is in Louisville, which is out on the front range. Good. The dilly beans, these are like insane. They're my new favorite thing. So it's got a little kick? Oh yeah, they're spicy. Oh, all right. I'm he has pika lili and he has like garden relish, things that are different. Colorado grown asparagus that's organic that pickled asparagus. We have all kinds of pickles, um, quinoa even that's grown Ooh. over in Mosca, Colorado. How cool is that? They grow potatoes also. So that's over by the sand dunes. I don't know if you guys know where that is, but. Um, and then Big B's apple cider vinegar. And then all this amazing produce. We have beans from Dove Creek, Colorado. We have oats that are grown in Colorado. Peppers, these are grown at Skip's farm. Skip owns a farm in Palisade that has 4,500 peach and nectarine trees and like five high tunnels uh, and lots of fields. We do carry some citrus, either from Arizona or California, avocados from California. But as I said, I try to find the exact okay. farm that they're from, research the farm. What do they support in their community? Uh, so you're pretty like hands-on with everything that's coming in here. Yeah, you're, I hand-select everything. Doing a lot of research on how they're practicing. Yeah, and, and we do care about organic. A lot of the farmers here, they can't afford to get organic certification. Yeah. And it kind of, you know, binds them to some practices that maybe they don't agree to as well, some laws. Um, and there's always this question, um, is organic or local better? Right. That happens, this conversation happens weekly at the store. And I think my personal opinion on it is that local is better because then you have the opportunity to have a conversation with your farmer right. and maybe change their exactly. minds. <laughs> and also, you know, you can actually go there and find out and then if you don't wanna support conventional practices, you can right. also, you know, it may just be a smaller family farm that can't afford the organic label. Yeah, so everything is organic in here that is a produce product. It's just not certified organic unless it's from a larger farm and distribution company. Um, the only things that really aren't organic is some of the canned goods. A lot of these small companies, you know, that's a whole other level to get certified organic kitchens. Yeah. And that's an interesting route too because you have to adhere to some things that might not be in alignment with sustainability or regenerative agriculture or just health for the environment like you have to when you have an organic kitchen you still have to adhere to the things like washing everything in bleach which creates dioxin pollution and yeah. pollutes our waterways so 
if you know your vendor, you know your farmer, you're able to better know what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah, very true. And support each other and have a conversation. It's better for our economy. It's just, it's wonderful. It's great to have all these relationships with Absolutely. everybody. And be able to go to their farms and them come in and be able to go to their kitchens where they produce and see what's truly going on. You know, when you buy something that's organic, like I said, I won't buy anything that's not from the U.S. Um, once you start getting farther and farther out, you become more and more detached. And it can say it's certified organic, but you don't really know. You're just kind of putting in some blind trust. Yeah, but then you're getting transportation costs yep. and all the other stuff that comes, comes with, with that. Comes with it, too. So, yep. Yeah, I think, I think there needs to be a massive shift or a balance to where a lot we're pulling a lot locally. And then the necessities maybe internationally and nationally. Yep. But um, I hope there are more stores like this pulling. I mean, just and most of these businesses too practice sustainably. Yeah. So I hope so too. That's why I'm here because I'm passionate about it. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Daily. Thanks, Drew. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us right here at Skip's Farm to Market. We're gonna pick up some produce and head out. See ya. We are in Carbondale, Colorado, right outside of Mana Foods, getting ready to speak with Sodentar and her team to see what exactly is going on in here. Let's go. Make sure I get my good side. You guys are coming out to the ranch Come on later, in. right? Yes. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll see you there. Yeah, see you guys there. <coughs> bye bye. Hey, hey welcome. Sodentar, welcome how are to you? Mana Food. So glad that you could come. Thank you. It's good to be here. So, what is Mana Foods all about? So our mission is to encourage and teach people about sustainability. And it's our understanding that to be sustainable, that everything that we need is in our food. But it's food that's locally grown and organic. And as much sustainable agriculture as possible. So anyway, we're a teeny store, we're 800 square feet. This is what we are. Um, but we're full of amazing amount of love, incredible people, activist people, farmers, community. Creativity is what we thrive on. Fantastic. So, you are a little bit of a legend around these neck of the woods, from what I hear. How how long have you been involved in the kind of organic, sustainable food movement in the, in the Roaring Fork Valley? Wow, I've never added it up, but at least twenty since I was in my early twenties. So I started um, a few of the farmers markets. Um, I got involved because I realized that there's nothing else on this planet that makes sense except for doing organic food. And so, um, anyway, then mana, we got involved. We were able to birth Mana Food. It was a group of us. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. For me, it's about the food, but all the people that are passionate enough to really make changes in their lives to heal our planet. So, um, the other thing that I love to say is I was born here and I grew up with everybody telling me all the problems, all the problems in our community and in the world and da 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 and um, it got super old. And so for <laughs> me it was like, how can we be 100% the solution? Right. And the fact that I was able to stay home and like bring that home is really important to me. I think that's fantastic. Even in, in remote locations it seems pretty tough to have a sustainable food scene or organic scene and it seems like Roaring Fort Valley has really blossomed. There's a number of places around this area that are pushing for for those practices. Yeah, I think it's changing. This whole idea that remote places, tricky, um, these are actually the places where it can be birthed quicker because there's enough connectivity in people still. And when they get it when they gather around a solution, it can happen like so fast, like just pop so it's really in these remote places where we're not super impacted by the stuff going on with political systems right. that that's where the, I'm seeing that that's where the birthing things are happening. So where people are, there's a sovereignty in, in people in regions like this. They're not super caught up in what's going on with the government and with all the you know, crime and race, et cetera, et cetera. And so they tend to work together with any kind of person 
not a person that, oh, this is a Democrat, this is a Republican. Right. Like all the weirdo the things that separate us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's fantastic. still it's still a healthy community. It's yeah. people that work together and want a better world. So um, that's because we've been able to do it here. I know that this is happening everywhere in our culture and in our country. And it's people that are tired of fighting. They're just sick of fighting about everything that you can imagine. And so they're starting to just like, well, how like in your videos, eat amazing food and have a lovely time. Right. Everyone needs to relax, calm down, <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it. Right. Um, that's great. Um, do you, uh, we'll meet the rest of the crew, kind of go yeah, around yeah, the, the store it. a little so, bit? Um, yeah, so off into our produce section, it's an opportunity to meet uh, Andre and Natalie Ray. Hello. Hi. And so what's your name? I'm Natalie Ray. Nice to meet you, Natalie. Pleasure. So what do we have over in this section? In this section, we have our local, organic, Colorado produce. Um, if it's not local or regional, uh, it still is all organic. And uh, on the shelf here, I have my own parsley. So I'm on the Adi Shakti board, which runs Mono Foods. And I've started my own small farm up uh, in Missouri Heights, which is nearby. So I started bringing in produce. We have uh, just down the highway, Wild Mountain Seeds, next to Sustainable yeah, Settings. Cool. Uh, we have Susty Garlic. A really cool thing that's going on over here are Double, bu double Up Food Bucks Colorado. And every time you buy or purchase food with your EBT SNAP dollars, you get the same amount given back to you to buy Colorado produce. So let's say you buy That's $20 awesome. of yeah. food, you get $20 to come back here and grab local Colorado produce. So it's a great way to get healthy food in people's homes. This is free. This is free yeah. money to get Colorado produce. So this just happened this That's spring. Awesome. Yeah. It's, That's that's great. It's brand new. They're doing a similar <clears throat> kind of uh, business or organization in Florida. Snap cards, okay. offering the same incentive. So it's yeah. amazing that it's actually taken off nationwide. It seems like yeah, it's happening on, on state levels. You know, taking yeah. initiative. So yeah. Colorado, that is awesome. as an agricultural state, is, is leading the way. I think uh, I don't know if Polis has anything to do with it, but I think but he is definitely food like food driven and very aware. Right. Um, what else over here I can tell you about? So. Yeah, so we work with local farmers, and our whole thing is becoming regionally sustainable. And we find it to be a really radical act when you know everything is corporate and large scale. We try to bring in the so the small scale, the local farmers, and building up that economy. So it's really symbiotic because we couldn't be the store that we are without. The farmers doing their thing and, and it allows them a whole nother avenue to drop off their food they don't have to stick around like a farmer's market they drop it off they get a check and walk out right um there's something that just, oh, okay when it comes to rural areas with becoming strong uh small scale production zones i think it's easier than urban areas because there's the land here so if the mentality can change and the practices practices change then they can transform so much faster than uh, the urban areas where you have to you know build up right big push to do that probably mm -hmm. even more money you know have yeah. a yeah funder where we have ranchers who are realizing that grazing their whole area just isn't working so they a big step that's being taken and ACES is helping with that is uh, we have a lot of local nonprofits that help with education and implementation uh, so they're realizing oh you know if we can you know, graze rotational graze our animals we can preserve in this land longer right it does make sense in, in smaller communities or rural communities it's a little bit tighter niched yeah, yeah. So like you said, if you can educate those people, it probably is a lot quicker and easier to, to make that push. And yeah, we're things. all friends. We all know each yeah. other's names. <laughs> like, so it's really easy to get an idea across. Um, That's great. Uh, so Tonto didn't say, but she helped start the co-op that was in our valley for decades. Uh, 
And the, to the co-op went under, and we were, Stephanie, Santanta, and I were all part of it, volunteering. And when it went under, Mana Foods, our Adi Shakti Ashram nonprofit, bought it out, bought this space out, and kept it going. So it's just you know, stepping in where other things end and yep. carrying on the torch. So we are a nonprofit that fo focuses on being a creative solution, offering organic foods, Kundalini yoga for a sattvic lifestyle. So this, when this opportunity came up, we, we jumped on it. That's great. Yeah. Too cool. Yeah. All right. I think we're going to keep cruising on through. It's great. Thank you, Natalie. Nice to, awesome. meet you. Yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Stephanie, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice Pleasure. to meet you. Pleasure. Pleasure. And I'm, I'm, I'm not good at being in front of cameras. That's okay. This Sorry. is worth it to me. Cause yeah, this, good. This is, this is how things are going to change. We're passing by the frozen food, and that just speaks for itself. There's, if you want a quick meal, we've got good organic stuff at a reasonable price, and it's just awesome. So, so what I really wanted to talk about is the meats, because I'm the meat eater in the group. Okay. You know. There you go. And and a lot of these meats, like the the beef, if you are a bike rider and go on the bike trails up Prince Creek Road. The cattle are up there, and oh. they're really happy, and they're out in the woods. And when they when they come down off of the mountain, there's they go up on the mountains over on this side of the highway. And here, the the cowboys drive them down, and they run them straight through town wow. to the fields. You know, so the whole town is pretty much aware of where this meat. And they've seen the cows. It's part right. of our life. It's really cool. The fish guy. <laughs> He started out with one boat going to Alaska every year. Now he's got a big thing going on. And this is sustainably caught, very fresh. You know, it's such good fish. And sometimes we have wild boar, we oh, have wow. all kinds of stuff. You okay. know? So, yeah, yeah. so if, if the meat eater in the family is screaming for that hunk of meat, Come here. Boom, 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 there you this go. is the place. And our honey's here. I, I just love these honeys. They're all local. There's different different areas. Some up over the hill in Paonia. Some in Newcastle. Um, this is from Paonia, but it's all excellent honey. People sometimes people come in only to get the honey because they're um, they're got allergies and stuff. And this is local, so it, it helps with the histamines or yeah. whatever those things are. All yeah. Right. And this this is. The bulks, all of the bulk stuff in both these sections is what I use as a talking point to get people to come in here. Because you get the most awesome products at the cheapest prices. If you bring in your own container and reuse it, you're getting it awesome stuff at a cheap price. And, that, and huh. people say, oh, it's so expensive in there. But you can do it right. Right. You can do it right. And There's it works balance. for everybody. But this has saved my life, actually. Yeah. When I first started working here, I was incredibly sick, and I asked them if I could volunteer, and they said yes. I could only work a half an hour at a time when I started. Now I'm a beast. Here, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's I great. got good. I got tough, and That's great. I've eaten. I've eaten basically organic my whole life, and have been involved in co-ops and stuff. But when I got real sick, I started dialing it in. And I knew that I needed to stay active also besides yes. eating the correct food. Yes. And uh, nope. they let me come in and start helping. And, and geez, I can do full days now. That's great. Yeah, movement <laughs> is awful. one of the most important yeah. things we can and, do is keep things going. And, and being involved, you know, and yeah. even coming in here to shop. A lot of the customers come here out of a need to be a part of the community. And then they start. Then they start realizing that they've really gotten involved in something good. That the greatest food is right in this little small store. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, they feel good when they come yeah, shopping. Yeah. 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 I'm supporting you guys. You know. <laughs> and then and then they're coming back and go. But I need this. Right, you yeah. know? Cool. It's pretty good. It, it feels good working here. It's a real joy every day. That's great. Absolutely. <laughs> Pardon? You want to, yeah, some spices. Okay, let's go look at the spices because okay. that's my that's the main thing I, I like to. That's your your expertise. Well, I hook people in. I'm not very much of a cook, but, <laughs> but this is where you get the best deals uh, and the freshest, most organic, wonderful spices. I'm becoming a better cook. You bring in your own container, and you have all of these choices. It's so much fun. Oh, this is great. Yeah. 
you're just what you can put together it's it's endless and I just play with spices and I and I convince people that have never been in here to come and buy because it's really inexpensive for the high quality product you get. And when they realize how much they can get for the low price, then, then they start coming in. Once right. they start coming in, they realize they're what's hooked. really going on here, yeah. and they're part of the gang. And we saw some of that bee pollen that you, you all have oh, here. Yeah. Wow, that looked amazing. It is. It yeah. is. It tastes great, too. It's That's awesome. fantastic. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> Absolute okay, pleasure. Bet. Appreciate oh, it. Glad you came. And then uh, I think you wanted to show us one more thing. Yeah, yes. This is a hidden surprise. All right. Um, Yeah, I think you want the one shot of all of us. Cool. Do we need to run at the worm bin, but anyway. It's up to you. Well, <laughs> we should have one shot together. So, so the mission of Mana Food is that we model it off the zero waste idea. It's a European store. Like it's happening everywhere and it's really how health food stores run themselves. But the zero waste is the idea that you don't need, like she was saying, you don't need to pay for all the packaging. And so that's why we have liquid bulk, spices, stuff you can get in bulk. So another aspect of that is all the stuff that we have left over, right? So food that spoils. Um, so this is what I wanted to show you is that we want to tell people about this because part of the zero waste and healthy food and healing yourself through food is, um, is growing your own soil, right? Yeah. Because this is really what's going to start to heal our planet. This is what's processing one, um, like a five gallon bucket a week through here. And so they just get in there and they eat the whole thing. Oh, yeah. So anyone can do this in their backyard with all their waste. And then these are called red wigglers, but um, we're passionate about this because they do all the work, right? Yeah. All we have to do is turn the shovel. So, uh, like you said, someone can just come and get these worms from you. Yeah, we'll sell them the worms. Yeah. And then the other aspect, right, is you're growing your own soil. So, I mean, we're in the process of it, but... And these, they don't stay alive in the Colorado winter. Oh. So, there's a bit of project involved in that. Yeah. But that's a whole other story. So Thank you for joining us right here at Mono Foods in Carbondale, Colorado. It's a very special place. Get out here, check it out, support the locals. See you next time. Come on down.